Latest on the missing mother investigation. I question whether an electronic bracelet is actually necessary in this case. While his attorney argues he shouldn't have to wear one, today in court, a judge gave Fotis Dulos a stern warning about making sure those batteries on his GPS monitoring device are fully charged. Now, the judge called them into court after learning from probation officers that the batteries had gotten dangerously low a couple of times. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane was in the courtroom and joins us now live from outside Stanford Superior Court with more for us. Matt? Denise and Dennis, this hearing lasted about 20 minutes this afternoon. In it, Norm Pattis, the attorney representing Fotis Dulos, he laid out his claim on why he feels his client shouldn't have to wear that ankle monitoring device while also arguing against the gag order that was put in place earlier this month. I am unaware of any other case in the state of Connecticut where a person not charged with a crime of violence and with no criminal history has been had an electronic uh, monitoring device imposed. And I question what the necessity of it for, uh, what, the, what, what the necessity for it is here. The judge ruled the ankle bracelet will remain and warned Fotis Dulos to make sure he follows the conditions of his release. That includes charging the batteries before they get dangerously low. Low battery status is not a trivial condition. But today in court, the prosecutor argued Dulos was treating it as such. I would ask that you start setting a curfew for him because he's obviously just basically thumbing his nose at the court. The state's been using GPS monitoring to keep tabs on the whereabouts of Dulos and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, since they first posted bond back in June, following their arrests in connection to the disappearance of his estranged wife, Jennifer Farber Dulos. In addition to arguing about whether his client needs to be tracked with a GPS device, Pattis told the judge that this week he'll be filing a motion with the Connecticut Supreme Court, looking to overturn the gag order that was put in place earlier this month, prohibiting the attorneys and police from commenting on the high-profile case. Pattis has said the gag order will not impact how he defends his client. It's our position that the judge acted in ways that no other court in the United States ever has by basically imposing a prior restraint on Mr. Dulos, me and others associated with the case, barring us from commenting on a charge that hasn't even been brought. Now, Dulos will be back in court here in Stamford next week, and his attorney says they will be arguing a motion to have the charges uh, already in place to be thrown out. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom in Stamford. Matt McFarland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.